In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this rocking Adirondack chair. Rocking Adirondack. That's what we're doing, stay tuned. I built a folding Adirondack chair so that I could pull them out for the season, but then stow them away for winter. And I love that chair, but I wanted to combine it with a rocker, which is how this chair came about. I'm using treated one by material for this project and started off by laying out my templates and marking my boards so that I could cut them to rough length at the miter saw. And I sell templates on my website if you'd like a set to build your own chair. I set the templates in place to trace. Then once I cut it to length at the miter, I now rough cut them over at the bandsaw. The benefit to having MDF templates is the ability to use a router and flush trim bit to get these parts exact. So at this time, I'm cutting just outside my Sharpie mark. Next, I use a little bit of double-sided tape to stick my templates to my board temporarily. This will allow me to run the parts over a router and get all of these curves perfect very quickly. I went ahead and cut all of my parts up front and ended up with a table full of parts. Before I started assembling things, I changed out the bit in the router table and put a slight round over on everything. Be sure to check out Stealth Respirators if you're looking for the most comfortable half mask on the market. And I have code if you end up purchasing one. With all of my parts cut and rounded over, I started assembling. Let's start off with building the seat section. I grabbed the two bottom supports and stood them up on end, then first glued and screwed on the frontmost slats. I recommend using a pre-drill here to prevent the material from splitting. I'm also using exterior wood glue. Even though this will go on my porch, there is a chance that it will get rained on. I went ahead and jumped to the back most slats before attaching more. I used a large speed square to make sure the two seat supports are square before I attach the slat. Then I filled in the area in between. You can use the spacer to make sure everything is perfect, but I am guilty of just eyeballing it. The reason I jump around like this is you lock in the front when you attach the first slot. Then you get the support square and lock in the back with the last. Now this will save you from measuring for square as you go because there's no way for it to move as you fill in the in-between. So that is the seat belt. Now let's start on the back by grabbing the lower and upper support. I set these on edge so that I can lay the back slots on top of them and work out the spacing. I find it easiest to mark center on both supports, then start by attaching the centermost slats, then working my way out. You wanna be careful here that the bottom and top supports are in line with each other. I do this by using a loose slat and a speed square. The slat acts as a flat reference, while the square makes sure that reference is on the same line as the bottom support. Once I know it is, I can pin the slat to the top slat and lock in its position. Now I can just work my way out, repeating the process with glue, a pre-drill, and a screw. Again, I'm doing this by eye, but a spacer also works. And just like that, we now have a back. So let's combine it to the seat I already made. Perfect. I permanently attached it with glue and screws that go right down into that seat support. Now I'm gonna let that hang out while I work on assembling the rocker assembly. I'm using one of my favorite methods to make a half lap, which is putting together two layers of one by material instead of cutting a recess in two by material. Everything is intertwined to create strength, but it's very simple and quick. To plan this two layer construction, I use 3D Experience SolidWorks from Makers. This amazing design tool is available for only $99 a year and you can get 20% off while supplies last. Just click the link in the description and create a 3D Experience ID, which will give you access to the 20% off offer. I always first lay out my parts to make sure things will work and line up, but once I see that it's good to go, I start gluing and brad nailing things down. It's important here to make sure the bottom rocker is really flat and smooth so that you end up with a clean rock on the finished product. It's also important when you go to make the second that you mirror it. I'm dyslexic, so this task can be a little tricky for me. Yay! The tricks you gotta do when you have a backwards brain. Now I bring back out the main body and add these rockers to it. I tried two different methods for this. First, I laid the body on its side and set the first rocker in place on top. I temporarily held it in place by throwing in a few brad nails, but to permanently attach it, I'll throw in a few carriage bolts later. 
Instead of trying to flip the entire unit 180 to attach the other side, I instead just slid the rocker under the body. And these assemblies slipped right into the recess I left for them earlier. I again made sure the bottom surface was perfectly flush. Nice. Okay, now let's stand this up and put in some carriage bolts. I put a quarter inch bit in my drill, then drilled through the outside of the leg to the inside, then hammered in a bolt. Before putting in the nut, I first applied some DAP tank bond, which is a liquid you can apply to the end of the bolt before adding a nut. This fast drying coating will absorb shock and vibrations, preventing fasteners from unintentionally backing out over time. And don't worry, a treated fastener remains completely adjustable, removable, and reusable. Okay, next up is to add the arms. So I actually had a different plan on how I was gonna attach the arms to this back top support piece, but I realized that it was way more complex than what it needed to be. So instead, I'm gonna simplify it by just removing this back top support, changing the angle so that whenever I connect the arm, this is gonna be flat to one another. This will put in some extra holes in my back slats, but oh well, I'll call it character. I laid out the three pieces, the two arms and the top back support, then attached everything. I used glue, two screws per connection, and a speed square to make sure the arms were going on square to this back support. Simple. Okay, now let's try this again. Yes, that is more like it. Now I could attach it to the front legs, then quickly reattach the back slats to the top support. It is, it's probably not the best idea to test out a rocking chair on a workbench, but I did it anyways. Don't fall off. Don't break. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I must say, it's really comfy, folks. Next, the woodshed crew took turns trying it out. Duncan! What? Why are you on the table? Because it was on the table. Okay, and I think that's gonna wrap up this project. I still wanna paint it, but if you work with treated wood, it needs to dry completely before it will hold paint. Overall, this build only takes about two hours to assemble, and it is very simple. Get off my lawn. You can knock out a few at a time and give them to anybody for pretty much any occasion as a great gift. The time consuming part is cutting out the parts needed, but of course, utilizing templates will drastically speed up that process. If you would like plans or templates to make your own out of rock deck, that's hard. A rocking Adirondack chair, then you can see the description down below. Check out my website where I have plenty of other woodworking plans and templates. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you on my next one. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this rocking Adirondack chair. Rocking Adirondack. That's what we're doing. Stay tuned. Adirondack. A rock. What is it? At a rock deck. At a rock deck. At a rock. It's an Adirondack deck chair. At a rock deck. At a rock deck that rocks. At a rock deck that rocks is an Adirondack. At a at a rock deck. At a rock deck. At a rock Adirondack. I'm never gonna get these words right. <laughs> Justin, you sit down and do it. Yeah, pretend to be me. In this video, we'll be making a rocking Adirondack chair, what I like to call an Adirondack deck. Wow. Yeah, your mouth actually works. <laughs> Before letting you go, let me thank this video sponsor real quick, which is Ariat. I'm born and raised in Texas, so I always knew Ariat as a high quality boot maker. And while I do have their boots in my closet, they are so much more than that. Ariat has been putting in a lot of effort into their workwear line built for women that is designed by women. If you've been following along, you'll already know that means pants that not only have functioning deep front pockets, but also side pockets that can carry extra tools needed for whatever job you're currently doing. They also have traditional work boots that definitely take the title as the most comfortable pair of work boots I've ever worn right out of the box. They also have a full lineup of button up shirts that have some fabulous design engineering so that the shirt can move with you as you work instead of making you feel all constricted and tight. If button ups aren't for you, they also have a great casual line of long sleeves that are perfect for my Texas winners in the shop. Regardless of what you're after, give the area a look as they always think about the fit, the function, and the durability in every item that they have. Also, you can get 10% off any Ariat order if you use the link down in the description. Big thank you to Ariat for supporting my channel and what I do. If you would like to build your own rocking Adirondack chair, you can click here for plans and templates and then here to subscribe for more videos.